Hey, this is Math 7, Unit 7, Lesson 6, Building Polygons, Part 1. So we're going to be building some shapes today. First, we'll begin off with a true and false about some sign numbers. Decide whether each equation is true or false. And be prepared to explain your reasoning here. So first of all, we have a positive times a negative over here, which gives me a negative 24, right? No problem there. And I have four of these negative numbers. So here's a negative six and a negative six and a negative six and a negative six. If I was to add that up, it becomes the sum and they keep the sign the same. So because the sign is the same, I still end up with a negative value and six plus six plus six plus six is the negative 24. That would be a true statement there, no problem at all. Here we have a negative eight times four, negative eight times three plus another four. Well. Again, the, the idea here is that here is, I'm doing negative eight four times, right? I'm doing four groups of negative eight, or I could think about it as, as uh, negative eight groups of four, but really it's more like negative eight, it's three groups of, sorry, I have really I have four groups of negative eight. Here I have three groups of negative eight, but I'm adding an additional four. That's not another group of eight though, so it's not gonna work out the same. When I multiply this out, I end up with a negative 32 over here. This is a negative 24 plus four, which gives you actually a positive 20. That's gonna be a false statement for, number, for the first second one. Here we have a negative, a six times negative seven, which is a negative 42. In this case, I do order operations, which is a negative 49, but I'm gonna add seven to that. So negative 49 plus seven actually becomes a negative 42. That's true because it equals. And finally here, negative six minus six more is a negative 16. It's like adding the opposite. And over here, when I have a subtract a negative number, that's like adding, all right? So it's adding the opposite. So adding the opposite becomes plus plus. So negative six and positive six, negative 10 and positive six becomes a negative four, and that is not equal, so that'd be a false statement there. So just a little bit of kind of review, playing with true and false signs there. The next activity says that I'm gonna give you, you're gonna use some strips of different lengths and fasteners so you can attach the corners. So it might give you some pieces of paper, you're gonna attach the corners together, you're gonna build some polygons, some multi-shaped uh, sided shapes, and at least one triangle and one quadrilateral is what we're gonna do. After we do that, we're gonna measure the angles and the shapes, and then we're going to use the measurements uh, along the side lines as marked, draw your triangle and quadrilateral as accurate as possible. So once we've, we've done this, we're gonna try to draw it in this space down below. I'm gonna go ahead and try to use the applet that we have here, little Desmos applet today, and see if I can make this work. Wish me luck, all right? So what I've found so far in doing this here, I had a hard time using it with my finger because as I moved the shapes, I couldn't see the circles match up. So when you grab this here, I wanna make sure I have the arrow tool on and I wanna grab the green part. The green part will move the shape around and then, or where I wanna go, and then the orange circle will help me kind of pivot things around. So for example, right, if I was to grab the four, and bring the four to there. I can grab the green and pull it down. I find that if I connect my greens together like so, then it functions a little bit like a hinge and I can move that where I want to move it. So I'm gonna grab a three and a four and I'm just gonna grab a five real quick. And I'm gonna put my five hinge on top of the yellow right there. Okay, that way it's just it's just together and it's just easy that way for me to move because now I can move this hinge and because I can move that I can adjust the two of these here to try to figure out how to line them up like so. So now I have a triangle with those angles there. So I want me to draw a triangle, quadrilateral, and some other shape. So that's my triangle. So let me draw a quadrilateral real quick. I can grab, uh, let's grab the eight, because it's kind of fun. I'll put that down there here on the bottom. Quadrilateral is a little bit trickier just because of just the movement of the hinge pieces, right? If I drop that six on top of there, no problem. I can hinge it and, and make it go where it needs to go. But now I need to get two more shapes in here. So I can drop a five on top of that one maybe, and maybe do a five on top of this one. Let me twist it real quick so I can get it to move around. 
and drop a five on top of that one. And then maybe perhaps, oops, maybe perhaps I can, see it's hard to get the other one back when you want it. I can move these guys together and figure out how to get the fives to connect. And again, it's sometimes tough. So maybe if I zoom in a little bit, I can pinch that, zoom it in. Maybe it'll let me, oops, now I'll go back to my pointer tool. Once I zoom it, it'll let me grab it a little bit better. Okay, not bad. So let me zoom out. So I have a quadrilateral back in my arrow tool and I have a triangle. All right, now what I want you to do is to do an angle measurement. I did have trouble with this tool here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the angle measurement and what it wants you to do is it says select three points or two lines. So I'm gonna select point, point, and point. And each time I do this point, it gives me the value on the outside of the angle, which is a little frustrating. I'm not sure why it does that, but it does it a lot for me. So you might have the same thing. So if I wanted to find out what that was gonna be, I could do 360 minus that to find out what that angle measurement's gonna be. But for now, let's just keep doing the other ones. I'll go dot and dot and dot. And I find the inside there is 52. I go here and here and here. Inside there is 36. Again, I just can't get that inside to work. Oh, there it goes. So I just touched the inside. So I got the inside one there, awesome. So here are three angle measurements for the triangle. I can do the same for the quadrilateral. Touch the inside maybe. Inside, inside, inside. Cool. And now we'll go inside, inside, and inside. Got that one. Inside, inside, inside. Oops, I'll do there. Got that one. Let's try this one now. One, two, and three. Huh, where's the measurement? Hmm. Try again, one, one, let's start over here. Let's back it up. So go one and two and three. Okay, so it's 78. All right, so now that I have those two shapes drawn, what I want you to do then on your paper is to sketch that out as best as you possibly can. So if I did my triangle, for example, I know I had a, had a, a length of four on one, right? So I could do centimeters, probably the easiest way to measure this out here. If I did inches, it'd be just too big. So I had four there. So I know that's my for sure length there to there. And then it said that I had to do, I was doing about 90.1 degrees. So almost straight up, right? So I'm gonna make a little mark here at 90.1, right about there. And then I just know I'm gonna get my ruler lined up with that. And I can make a quick little sketch if I chose to. This won't be my actual line. This is just kind of a sketching line, right? And then I'm gonna go up three, because I, I used three units for that one. So I got three. So there's my point and my point. And then I can just play connect the dots on this part and it should be about five, which sure enough, it is. So we're at five and there we go. So that's my triangle there that I did. So I have four, three, and a five. I have a 91 degrees here. I could check these measurements by about a 52 and about a 36. Doesn't quite add up to um, what I want it to be. So I, it doesn't even add up to 180. So let's make this a 37. Okay, that way that I can say 37 plus 52 plus 91, sorry that all equals 180 as it should, okay? And so you can do the same thing with your other quadrilateral. You can, you can try to sketch that out as best you can. Just for the sake of time, I'm not gonna sketch mine out because I already drew that here on our applet, okay? So that's what you did there. And maybe you did it with pieces of paper, that's awesome. So let's look at number, uh, activity three. It says, Bill and Diego and Jada's shapes. Diego built a quadrilateral using side lengths of four, five, six, and nine, and it wants us to build that shape. Okay, so let's build a shape of four, five, six, and nine. And so I'm gonna scroll up here to our next little activity, and we're gonna build his shape with four, five, six, and nine. 
All right, so let's see how this works here. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a nine. Just because it's the largest one, it'd be harder to move later. So I'm gonna put that one down first. Then I'm gonna move with a six. I'm gonna drop that in place right there. And I can move that wherever I want for now. And I have a five. I'm gonna get in, pivot that and drop the five hinge on top of there. And I know I have a four to work with as well. So here's what's interesting. I can put this four a lot of different places. I could open up the six and in essence, I could try to make it fit in there and make a shape like that. I could also bend this down to here and we could pivot the four and make it fit in that space there. So there are a couple different things that I could do to make this work, aren't there, right? So it's not like there's just one answer for this problem. And that's an important thing for us to realize is that I can actually make a couple different shapes. Oops. A couple different shapes. And that really is the question of the day, right? The question is, is that and when I make this shape there, is it gonna be identical to whatever Diego draws? It does. It depends. Here's one that could be his shape, but in the same token, I could also say that his shape might look something more like this, right? Like we just said a second ago, we could say his shape looks more like that. Those are the same lengths, but a different shape. So because it's flexible, because it's bendable, movable, and we can move these things around, again, if you're using the paper one, it probably is a little bit even easier to just kind of bend and twist your corners there we can see that it's not going to be identical because if it's identical it's going to match perfectly on top of each other without changing the lengths of the angles but we just made two different ones that were not identical for Diego's shape right so that's just not going to work out too well so is it going to be identical we would say nope right and again just as a quick sketch we made one that looked like this and we made another one that looked like this right and they were the same lengths. They had a nine and we had a nine. And then we had a six, a six, we had a four, a four, a five, and a five. So just the side lengths is not enough to make an identical copy. It's just not gonna work for us. Now it says Jada built a triangle using side lengths four, five, and eight. If we do that, will we get an identical copy? So let's see what happens when we do Jada's four, five, and eight inch triangle. So I go back to my applet. I'm going to try to press the reset button here. There we go. And we're doing a four, five, and eight. So again, I like to start with the larger one. It's just easier to put that base down first of all. And we're going to put a four, and we're going to drop the four on the hinge point right there and spin it up a little bit. I'm going to grab a five. I'm going to have to spin it to start with just so I can get it the right space and drop it right on top of that. And now when I move my hinges around, should be able to get them to hopefully connect like so. And now we have a triangle that looks something like that. Now, is there any other way to make that triangle is the question. Can I make, is that identical to what Jada wants? And the answer to this one would be, again, for today, we're going to say that, yeah, it's going to be the only way we can do that, right? We could probably invert it and flip it the other way. Don't need to show you that right now. But we could do that, but it'd still be, for the most part, an identical shape. If you drew, did the snaplet, you did probably the same thing. The only thing you could have done differently, again, would have been perhaps to reverse these around. Oops, keep that there. Reverse these guys around a little bit. Ah, uh, the other one. Probably can't move it. And if I reverse these around, you'd end up with almost like what we call the mirror image, right? So same idea, but it'd be the mirror image just spun the other way. So if you were to cut them out with a piece of paper, it really would not be that different of a shape. It would just stack on top of each other, but just kind of reversed, okay? So for today though, we're gonna say we're okay. There's only one way to make that shape with those side lengths. So if I'm given three side lengths, there's only one triangle that I can actually make there. So identical copy here, we would say yes it's gonna work. And so we, we can draw a little sketch here of our eight, our five, 
and our four. And there's only one way to really make that happen there. Okay, I'm gonna skip uh, six four because it's optional, but again, it's another polygon you can build using those side lengths three, four, and nine and build that shape. And actually, uh, I said I wanna skip it, but I don't actually wanna skip it. Let's go ahead and do it real quick. We have six, four, and nine. Just wanna show this real quick with the applet because it's simple enough for me to do. So let me do a reload here. Okay, we're doing six, four, and nine. All uh, right, six, four, nine. No, three, four, nine, I'm sorry. Get my thing the right way. So what they want you to see here is that when I take a nine and a three, I can drop a three on the hinge point, no problem, and spin it there. And if I take the four, let's twist it this way. Notice that no matter what I do with the three and the four, can I make those things come together? No, there's no way. I can't make it any larger and it won't connect any possible way. And we'll talk more about this later. But what you notice though is that this longer length is nine and these lengths combine to make what? Seven. Hmm. So that's an interesting little thing to think about. But we'll get to more of that in an upcoming lesson. All right. So let's take a look then at, well, here's our thing we have here, right? Here's our nine, here's our three, here's our four, and we have that gap in between. Okay, so that is what you have for the day. Summary, sometimes we have polygons and ask to find the lengths of the sides. What options do we need to build a polygon with same some side lengths? Um, there's lots of different ways. So this is an example here of having four different side lengths and saying build a polygon. It's too flexible. It can move around too many different ways. So it's just not gonna be an identical copy. We need more information to make an identical copy sometimes. So. Just something to learn there. All right, let's take a look at your homework and see how you did. So pause the video. Start your homework and then come back. All right, number one, it says a rectangle has side lengths of six units and three units. Could you make a quadrilateral that is not identical using the same four side lengths? If so, describe it. All right, now it says it's a rectangle and has side lengths, uh, those things. So can we make a different quadrilateral that's not identical using the same lengths? So for example, we have this given to us, something along these lines. We have a rectangle where I have a six and I have a three. So can I do a six and three and make it a different shape? The answer to that would be, sure we could, right? Let's try this. If I did a length of six, like so, and then instead of doing a 90 degree angle, I did more of a diagonal angle, like so, right? And then did another six off the side here. This won't be perfect, so I'm just kind of sketching it out there. And then connect my dots, another three going there to there. Now, what do I have? Well, I have for myself here a parallelogram, okay? With length six and length three, it's a quadrilateral, just in a different shape. That would work there, no problem, okay? Can I do it a different way? Sure, I could. I could also do it where I have a, something like this, where I have a six and a six, and then I have a three and a three, almost like a kite would be. So there are a couple ways you could actually draw that to make um, two different shapes at least with the same four side lengths. Number two, come up with an example of three side lengths that cannot possibly make a triangle and explain how you know. All right, so here we go. Let's do it, we did this a second ago. Let's say I have a side length of seven here. And let's make a side length of three. and a side length of, we can do another three if we want, but I'll just do two, <laughs> okay? Three and two. So these three lengths would never make a triangle. And the reason for that is that two plus three is less than seven, right? What needs to happen is these two lengths, A and B, need to be 
greater than the value of C. In order for this to work, these two links have to be greater than the value of C. Take for example, if I had a length of four on the bottom, four, right? And if I had a length of, and this is gonna be hard because I don't have an actual angle measurement here, but a length of two. So if four is what I'm looking for there, this distance from here to here is two plus whatever that is, let's call that x, has to be greater than four. We can see that I can make a triangle and it can connect, right? It can connect there. So what is that value of x gonna be? If I subtract two, subtract two, x is gonna be greater than two, right? Let's see if it is, we can confirm that. Sure enough, look at that. It's about 3.6, 3.7. So it does work. As long as these two values are add up to something greater than this other value, then we're gonna be okay. All right, let's look at number three. Find x, y, and z. Okay, here we go. First of all, we have a vertical angle for y, going straight across, so y is gonna be 18 degrees. We also have this vertical angle here for x, don't we? Straight across, so x is gonna be 64 degrees. And then finally, x, y, and z all together form a supplementary angle, which is 180. So we could say that 18 plus z plus 64 equals 180 degrees. All right, let's combine our things we know. So z plus 82 equals 180. We subtract 82, subtract 82, so that z equals 98 degrees. So we got x at 64 and y at 18 and z at 98. And we're good there. Number four, how many right angles need to be put together to make 360 degrees? So you could think of 360 and we could divide that by 90 and that means it takes four. So it takes four right angles to make that complete circle. How about 180 degrees? Okay, looking for right angles. So 180 degrees is here. How many right angles does it take to make 180? It's gonna take two. 270, now 270 is going from here to here. That's 270, so it's gonna take one, two, three right angles. Again, you could do 270 divided by 90 and that gets you three. And the last one is a straight line, or a straight angle, which is here. So how many 90 degrees does it take to get a straight angle? Well, I'll split that up there. You end up with 180 divided by 90 equals two. Yeah, which is what we just did with the other one. Okay, all right, and number five, here we go. Solve each equation. So we have several equations here to solve. So um, what I'm gonna do here, because this is kind of a review, is we're gonna go ahead and just kind of give you some solutions here. So you can check your solutions to make sure that they're right. This first solution should be 1 8th, okay? The solution down here, W should be, well, X should equal 1 8th. W here should equal 2.1. Z over here should equal 5 and 1 third, or you could do 16 thirds. And over here, V should equal two point, look at my notes here, four, three. I'm just giving you that there because this is good practice to work with your fractions and decimals, and your teachers are gonna wanna see some work there, especially this point in school year. Number six, you can buy four bottles of water from vending machine for $7, right? So we can get four bottles for what, $7. At this rate, how many bottles of water can you buy for $28, right? How many bottles? All right, so you can create a table if you want, or you can set up that ratio like so. To go from seven to 28, I'm gonna be multiplying by four. I could cross do cross products if I chose to, but I can see a simple connection between seven and 28. So four times four is gonna be what, 16. So that becomes my solution. Four times four is 16. 
down below. It costs $20 to buy five sandwiches from vending machine. At that rate, what is the cost for eight sandwiches? Again, I can cross multiply if I chose to solve this here, right? That would give me 160 equals 5x, divide both sides by five, and I end up with 32 equals x. I could also do a table like it suggests here, and do sandwiches and money. And I know that for five sandwiches, it costs me $20. As a K value, that's 20 over five, which can be reduced down to what? 20 over five is a four to one ratio. So I can do one sandwich is $4. If I'm wanting to find out how much for eight sandwiches, one to eight is what? Times eight. So four times eight is 32. And so I could use a table to also solve that. That's it for today. Hope that helps you out and we will see you next time.